I'm Royal Reber, and I'm in Youngest in the Yacht Club, number one podcast in the nation. Check us out, baby. They want the money and fame. We go to the city and we don't be tucking our chain. Woke up in paradise and we live in the drain. Youngest in the Yacht Club, I am Vince Serrano. Man, we got a special guest today. He's an entrepreneur. He's a fighter. And he's just generally a cool ass person, man. We got Royal Reber. What up, man? Hey, what's up, my man? Yo, glad to have you on the show, hey, bro. I'm glad to be here, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Man, we we always start off Youngest in the Yacht Club with the one question. Who is Royal Reber? Man, I will be the 135 pound champion come September 13th. Ooh. That's who I am, baby. <laughs> I'm here to stay. Let's go. Man, I've seen a lot. I, you know, I've, I've met you, but the first time I ever saw you, you were in fighting in Lakeland, Florida. Uh, <laughs> you were super swift inside the ring, man. Like, you've got hand skills. What made you want to start fighting? Uh, you know, my mom got me into it at about 16 by taking me over to the karate dojo in uh, Connecticut, where I'm from. Okay. And I started off there, and I kind of had this little epiphany, like, it just didn't feel right. Something didn't seem right. And mm. then uh, one of my guys that was in the um, in the dojo with me brought me in this book, and it was The Tao of Jeet Kune Do by Bruce Lee. Yeah. And that friggin' book changed my life, bro. Wow. Because I, I already thought in my mind, like, this just doesn't feel right. The style thing doesn't feel right. And one of the first passages I read of that book was style is not the way to go mm. and i was like damn see i i felt that and i automatically locked in with bruce and he became one of my biggest mentors ever man so i studied his philosophy watched all his movies read all his books and just absorbed man and one of the biggest things was uh his philosophy using no way as a way and having no limitations as limitations now granted when you're in a sport that requires you to move only your hands and your feet you know, there's limitations, but there's no limitations as the punches you could throw, the things you could do, the movements you can make. So, mm. you know, I, I just absorbed that, man. And, you know, like I, like I said, just absorbed what was useful, discarded what was useless and essentially added my own things, man. And that's why I feel like bare knuckle, you know, became more natural to me because I didn't use a boxer way or an MMA way or, you know, a this way or that way. I, I, I just adapt to what is given to me. So when somebody asks me the question, like, what are you going to do in your fight? I, I really don't know. What are you going to give me to do? Are you going to be timid? Are you going to be aggressive? Are you going to be... And all these things open up a new opportunity for me to react to. So, sure. you know, maybe you see certain things... I come out of me in, in in all of my set fights, but one thing is everything is going to be different. That's why I don't get too hung up on like, uh, you know, uh, film per se. You know what I mean? Mm. Because everybody's going to be different. Every fight they're going to be a little bit different. Man. Right against so, everybody, it's going to be a different a, a different sta a different approach to everything. Yep, correct. Yeah, exactly, man. So. so so you so you started off in, in karate, basically a karate background, and then realized like, hey, look, I, there is no background. Like, right. it is just yeah, what is, you what know. So then I got into, I figured out where the boxing gym was in Connecticut, which was about twenty minutes away from my location, right over the bridge in New London. Okay. So I got linked up with those guys, and um, you know, his son, uh, you, you go by the name of uh, Kent Ward up there in Connecticut, outstanding coach, outstanding uh individual. His son fought for Bellator, Brendan Ward. Wow. So, you know, I, I actually didn't really get to train too much with Brendan, but, you know, I trained with his dad, and that's right. who he learned, you know, stand-up from and, and that. And they just had a great gym up there, man, and, you know, got my got my feet wet in there. And then I kind of branched off, and I did some uh, kung fu with a guy by the name of Onassis Perungao, who fought as an alternate in UFC, I believe, 7, when there was no weight classes, there was no rules, and they were bare knuckle fighting out of the country, wow. you know, with no weight classes. So I learned I learned a lot of cool shit from him. Um, learned some uh, trapping hands and some some gung fu stuff, and you know, just kept expanding, expanding. Ultimately, I wanted to do MMA, but you know, getting older, that ship sailed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, for and, sure. You know, thank God for David Feldman and the BKFC bringing that a brand new sport, and I jumped into it. At the perfect time, man. Yeah. The, I mean, obviously, it would have been greater to be a little bit younger. But, you know, as a younger athlete, I don't know if bare knuckle was something I would have pursued. I may have stuck with boxing or MMA because, 
you know, bare knuckles rough, man. You yeah. know, you, your hands, the scars, the, you know, all that shit. Now, the thing I do love about it is there's not a lot of head trauma. You know, when you get hit with a glove on, you can punch harder. And that impact is more like getting into a small car crash. Right. You know, towards like you get hit with a knuckle. It's more like hitting your shin bone. It's like, oh, fuck, that hurt for a second. But it's not like, boom. And it's like, you know, you're really fucking yeah. just feel concussed by just one or two, you know, blows. And, and that accumulation of blows, it's just really not good for your brain. You know, sure. 12 rounds of boxing is fucking rough. <laughs> never, never been there, but I can only imagine like yeah. hats off to you guys that pull that shit off. You know, I'm cool with five, two minute rounds and, you know, fuck it. If they want to sprinkle a third or six one in there like they did with me and Travis, fuck yeah. it, do it. You know what that I mean? That was pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't want to do that, bro. But, hey, you know, it's what is this life, man, is just doing shit that you just don't want to do sometimes yeah. you just got to show up and do it bro. man i was there for that man that was pretty <laughs> she cool was fucking, man. when they told me we were going six i heard them say it from under the ropes it's like oh they're gonna do six i'm like the fuck you mean we're gonna do six and you could see my whole demeanor just my energy just be sucked out of me like because right. i'm thinking i won the fight and i'm getting ready to celebrate and i right. hear a six round i'm like no, 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 I'm, I'm melting, bro. I'm like, fuck. And, but I seen it in his face too, and his demeanor, like, six, what the fuck? And he didn't have nothing left. So I'm like, right. all right, well, now's my shot to just. Do, yeah. do what I did. It was kind of like pity pack because I couldn't couldn't <laughs> lay in there, bro. My hand, I couldn't even close my damn hands, bro. So talk about seeing what you're made out of, man. Fuck. And then, you know, right after that fight, then I'm in there with Perez. And when yeah. I tell you, like, I thought Travis was tough, which Travis is tough, one of the toughest men I've ever faced, that motherfucker Perez, bro. That, yeah. I mean, the level of toughness, a lot of people don't understand, man. I baited him into... The corner, or well, the back of the ring, I should say, because there's no corner. Right. And the first punch I hit him with, I blew his front tooth out, or you know, shook it to the point where it was definitely coming out within the following weeks. And wow. he ate that shit, bro. Wow. I was like, what the fuck? And when he ate it, he grabbed me and started, started hitting me with the dirty boxing, and I just couldn't, you know, I tried to get back on him, and it was just overwhelming. He got a little distance and cracked me into the temple. Wow. Going back to what I said about being hit in the shin bone, it was kind of like that. Ah, Oh, that fucking hurt. I got to take a knee. You know, right. and that that to me is is ring IQ, you know, and a lot of people can't develop that ring IQ in such a short amount of time without having the experience experience in bare knuckle fighting. Wow. So to be able to just do that quick and they think like, you know, damn, I got to take a knee, you know, to me, that's that's good ring IQ. So I take that knee. I gather my thoughts and I got. You know, you got not even 10 seconds to decide who the fuck you are at that moment. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, yeah. am I, is this how I want to go out? And I remember like just silencing everything around me and just being like, mm, and being like, damn, is this how I want to be remembered? Is wow. this how I want to go out? Nope. Get your ass back up. Get back up and we continue to fight, man. And yeah. Ended up making a fucking highlight reel out of you him, man. Did. You know, you did. I knocked that thing a couple teeth out, split them from like here to here, seen his skull. And I just remembered like, you know, seeing him in the back room spitting fucking blood and telling the dog, my teeth are loose, dog, my teeth are loose. I'm like, fuck, Wow. Man, this is fucking savagery. Yeah. This is yeah, fucking yeah, savagery. Yeah. Are, you, are you guys not entertained? You know what I mean? Fuck. You are, <laughs> you know, you like, are a gladiator. You know, there, bro. yes, we're, we're modern day gladiators, man. And it's just like, fuck, man, if you're not entertained by this, then just, man, stick to, uh, stick to basketball. <laughs> <laughs> man, what? So... So, did, have you ever done any other sports? Like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I not professionally. Of course, I've competed in boxing. I've competed a little bit in MMA, but I mean, nothing can prepare you for bare knuckle. Right? Like, how the fuck do you prepare for that? You yeah. don't. You it's know a, what I'm saying? A... And like, my first fight, I remember that. Like, even let me backtrack a little bit more. Going, you know, being involved in the sport. So, like, I got involved into it because they came up for a tryout when I used to train over here at Calta. I'm sure mm -hmm. you're familiar with Calta mm -hmm. right down the street from mm -hmm. you guys. And uh, I trained with Sherman Hansen and Calta. And Sherman comes through and he's like, hey, man, I'm going to bring in a bare knuckle guy. And I'm like, a bare knuckle? Who the fuck is a bare knuckle guy? He's like, yeah, he's your weight and they need sparring and you're a good boxer. So you're going to work with this kid. And at first, I kind of thought he was like, you know, bullshit, like bare knuckle guy. Like, OK. Right. So he comes in and that was Abby Velasquez. Oh, wow. And uh, he came he came to me and, um, you know, we started getting rounds in. And then they brought the bare knuckle to the gym for a tryout. And uh, Kevin Smith at the time was like, hey, man, you should try out. And I'm like, for what? He's like, bare knuckle. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. And he's like, yeah, man, it would just be good publicity. Try out. 
So I try out. Dave Feldman's there. Uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson's there. Chris Lights Out Lytle's there. Um, and this is a tryout with Lorenzo Hunt and Gene Herrera, you know, rest right. his soul. Right. Um, oh, yeah, Gene. You know, yeah, yeah Gene yeah. was there. You know, and these are good guys, man. Right. And, you know, fucking Lorenzo's vocal as fuck. Yeah, you know, he's, he's already loud. knows he's in there, <laughs> yeah. but he's 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 fighting for a spot anyway. So, you know, I do the little tryout. It consists of, like, hand mitts, hitting the bag, doing this. All of a sudden, here comes fucking Dave. What's your why? I'm like, I, I, whoa, time out. There is no why. I don't I don't know you. I don't know the promotion. I'm sorry, man. And I'm not I damn sure one thing about me is I'm not gonna lie to myself and right. I'm not gonna lie to you. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't know nothing about you guys. I don't know nothing about this. This was thrown on me today. I just decided, hey, fuck it, I'm gonna take a shot in the dark. And this dude's picking me like uh, ready to sign me right then and there. And I just was like, whoa, 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 just chill. And wow. you know, I should have took the contract, then reviewed it, then decided, hey, I don't want to do this. But at that moment, I kind of felt stupid and was like, no, nah, I don't want to do this and kind of turned them down. And he's like, well, the offer will always be on the table, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, OK. And the more I watched the the, the sport grow, you know, and the more the universe kept pulling me back towards it. Then I, you know, was training down on the south side at Winky Wright's gym and wow. then at Keith Thurman's gym. And then here comes Julian Lane. Uh, you know, yeah. another trainer in there was working with the bare knuckle guys. These right. guys are popping up everywhere. And I knew exactly who Julian was based upon, you know, tough, yeah. the ultimate fighter. And I was like, Julian, he's like, yeah, I'm like, let me bang, bro. And then <laughs> immediately, bang, you know, bang. we fucking hit it off. He's, you know, our birthdays are barely a month apart. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's so cool we, people, you know, man. yeah, we vibe at the same, you know, wavelength and the same energy. That's why I was just talking to him today. He's actually flying down in like two weeks That's to awesome. be with me for the rest of the camp and my fight man so you know that brotherhood is just something that you can't you know you you can't buy you can't you know it has to be genuine it has to be authentic man so you know once i got in with julian i i stuck by his side and i was like and he's telling me how he was gonna manage fighters i said you know what bro i'm gonna be your first fighter and he goes man you ain't bro you ain't gonna do bare knuckle i said no bro i tried out for it they wanted me i said bro i'm gonna do that shit and then you know it took a couple of shows i mean you get into that show it's a different energy you hear that and you're like, oh, yeah, fuck, bro. Yeah. Like, this is different, bro. <laughs> this is different. It so is. I had to, like, you know, build it up. And then finally, once I, I took the leap of faith, I said, because, you know, from the very beginning, I said, once I do this shit, once I hit the ground running, I'm taking over. You know, I'm not here to take part. I'm here to take over. You know what mm. I'm saying? This isn't going to be something that's just that I just want to try. This is going to be something that I'm going to be good at. That's awesome. You know, and as soon as I started doing it, I fucking fell in love with it. Yeah, yeah, there's, you know, certain injuries and certain things that kind of suck about it. But yeah. at the end of the day, man, six fights, haven't broken a hand, haven't broken nothing. Got little baby cut my last fight. That was pretty much the only time I've been cut. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like I said, start, you know, hit the ground running with Julian. He managed me for two fights and then he kind of got into a little bit of a rut. So I branched off, went with uh, Slaughterhouse. They kind of, you know, dogged me out a little bit and put me in bad situations. And then oh, wow. finally I got with uh, Vic over at All In. Thank God to HD, man. Shout out to HD yeah. for pulling me on the team, man. And Vic and Sam and everybody with All In Management has been a godsend for me, bro. That's so, amazing. You know, they 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 help me with anything that I need, make life so much easier right. on, you know, it, whatever it is I got to handle, man, they pretty much lay it out for me. Like, hey, you need to be here at this time to go do blood work. You need to be here at this time to go do your eyes. And, and it just makes takes a little, you know, pressure off. to Because, yeah. you know, as fighters, bro, I still got a life to run. I still got a business to run. I still got a family to take care of. So it's like, you know, I got all this shit I'm juggling. Like today, you know, I got people blowing me up for fucking haircuts. I'm like, oh, wait, my bad, bro. You're either going to have to catch me in a little bit later or this because I got to go run and do this podcast because this shit is important too because right. this is how I get my name out there. This is how I get people to, to see how my genuine authenticity and be like, you know what? That's a cool motherfucker right there. That's, you know, he resonates well with me, whether it's man, woman, child, you know, whoever you are, you know, there's always going to be something that can resonate with you. You know, my biggest thing is just letting people know that, bro, you could really do anything if you put your fucking mind to it. Legit. And, and, the, and the most important thing is your gratitude and your integrity, who you are behind closed doors. Mm. Authenticity is fucking key. That's why so many people can't make it in the game and they can't even make it in life because they bullshit themselves. Right. And when you bullshit yourself, you may not even know you're bullshitting yourself until you you know you get your back against the wall and you're like fuck i i pump fake so long to get to this point that what am i gonna do what am i gonna say that's why my even my opponents can't fuck with me bro right you know what i'm saying blyas he's a he's a he's a strong a very 
versatile, explosive opponent. But I don't care, bro. What makes me different than any man that he's faced is the is the vibration I vibe at, bro. Yeah. Is my energy. You know what I'm saying? High level, high level <laughs> shit, bro. And and you it can't be matched, bro. I love that. And if you can match it. You win for it, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's and that's awesome. that's it. And I've already seen it in his face because he told me he was going to fight me the next time he seen me in the streets. Well, I seen him after his fight, and he ain't have too much to say. Right. And then wanted to kind of shuck me off. Like, you know, they asked him about me in the press conference room, and his exact words were, Reber, 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 Reber. He's nothing, man. He's nothing. He, he's, you know what? That's a good fucking question, but next question. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, okay, bro. All right. You want to keep fucking shucking me off like that? I'm going to give you a fight. I'm going to give you what you're asking for, bro. You know what I'm saying? And now, now you're going to you test yourself. When's the fight? It's uh, September 13th. That's awesome. Main event, Hard Rock, Hard Rock Holly down in, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Yeah. Fort Lauderdale. You know what? I mean, in my opinion, I've been to a lot of shows. Um, the only ones that competed with that, that, that venue is, uh, maybe Connecticut was pretty cool when I fought out there and I was at Albuquerque, uh, during the, uh, Dotson and, and my boy JR yeah. when they fought and that was a pretty cool venue. So yeah, other I was than actually that, there you know, too, man. Cause I did the theme song for G Perez when he fought Bryce Hall that same night. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 So that All was right. a good, man. That was an awesome. Th that was a pretty cool venue, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Albuquerque was saying. It was shows big out. And <laughs> it was, you know, they, yeah, it was lit, bro. It's you know? crazy. And now I, I just went to, uh, the last one they had at the hard rock and it was awesome too, man. When and I was there and I was there as well, you know, and you get down and I got to mingle with Bam Margera, uh, David and Joku, um, Fire. Who else was there? The, the little fucking minions that uh the little YouTubers that I don't know nor give a fuck. I'm like, how does this motherfucker get so much clout, yeah, bro? That and, it, and you know, and it, and it made a little viral moment when I seen Neon coming through. And Neon, you better fucking remember me, boy. But I seen Neon come through and uh it just just was natural when I see him. I said, Oh, what's up, bro? You're the one I want. You don't want and this kid's like, he thought I was serious as hell. He's like, well, what you mean, bro? Like, bro, you're pressing everybody else. Let's let's get to let's Get the, and he had no fucking like. Yeah. He's like, bro, bro, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, nah, I'm, you know, yeah, basically, I'm just, I'm just fucking with you, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to fight you, bro. And uh, you know, it's. It's those moments I live for, man. And yeah. then I seen the Jack Doherty kid or whatever his name is, and the little eight year old that was there with me, whose dad owns the other gym I train at, uh, 360, uh, Palm Harbor 360. Uh, fitness 360 in palm harbor you know yeah. where me and dave train with our personal trainer he, he the owner of the gym brought his son out there and he's eight years old and he's oh my god that's jack doherty i said well you want a picture with him? i said hey bro come here i don't know who the fuck you are but this eight-year-old wants a picture with you so take a picture with him man. that's awesome so we get together and we take a picture but i mean like bro i don't care what your bank account looks like all i care about is what frequency you vibrate in that sure. man you know what For i mean because sure. just because you got money don't mean you know that shit could have been a hand down you know what yeah, i mean or yeah. you, your daddy could have came from it or you know you right. could have just fell into it you it know? really doesn't matter it, it, really doesn't it, matter. it don't man it just matters about your fucking character and who you are man For and sure. when the, the biggest thing that I tell people is man your gratitude and your integrity is key and All that's right. something that I've always had even as a young man before I could even identify that that's what it was you know what I'm wow. saying I've always treated people with respect I've always treated people sometimes with too much respect and I needed to you know right. what I mean and I've genuinely always looked out always even as a kid even when i owned the barbershop i've let barber slide on booth ran and building them up and all these things just to fucking for me to get burned in the long run yeah, you know what i mean yeah and then when you burn me and then i gotta turn into the fucking villain <laughs> I, I just you know i might fight you i don't know that's <laughs> right, just right, my mentality right, right. bro like hey, you know i'm a man bro you push me to the breaking points i might just open palm smack the fuck out of you i don't know bro it's a, you never know you what never you're know. gonna get out of me right, bro like right, right. it's just being real you know and yeah authentic energy and also you know respect you yeah, know what that's what, i mean and that's all i live by i don't care if you're gay you're straight if you're this you gotta show you some respect man right. and, and i'm gonna respect you i respect the janitor just the same way as i respect the ceo man i, right. I do man it's it's just up for you to break that you know i give everybody 100 percent love loyalty trust and respect right off jump street that's care awesome. who you are and then it's up for you to see, you know, uh, to to show your true character and how, you know, we're going to go about things. You know That's what I mean? Like, you know, and all the people that I cut out of my life that were bad energy or that were maybe really low key plotting against me or really don't want to see me shine or win. I cut those people out and I started to excel so high, bro. And, it, and it's crazy, man. And, you know, one of the things I always say, too, is you show me your fucking friends and I'll show you your future. You know what I'm saying? Legit. So I choose 
to be around nothing but champs, like-minded people, people on the same that want the same things, the, the you know, the same results, the same destination I'm trying to go, man. So, you know, and that's why I surround myself. Dave, Dave Mundell, the, the current champ, you know, I spent yeah. a lot of time with him. Like I said, Julian, when he's in town, you know, he's just the fucking got that dog mentality, but he's he is very smart as well. You know what wow. I mean? Um, my trainers, you know, the you know, the the kids, the people in my gym, those are the people I surround myself with. And other than that, man, if you're not on the same mission as me, we can't. I don't you even want to be buy. in the same room with you, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just buy. because it, you know. Yeah, it is. That's, it is, that's it is. what it is, bro. Well, man, when we come back, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. I'm going to ask you some things outside the ring. Uh, questions about, you know, entrepreneurship and then advice that you can give to people coming up. So once yes, we sir. get back on Youngest in the Yacht Club. Let's do it, man. We're back on Youngest in the Yacht Club with Royal Reber. Reber, I got a couple questions to ask you because, you know, obviously you're, you're a professional. Like, how is... How like when did you say like hey look I'm I'm gonna start making money off of this or how do you make money off of fighting because you see it so many times I mean honestly it's hard man you gotta you gotta be willing to sometimes get stepped all over and you gotta be willing to sacrifice a lot of your time and a lot of not making money you know mm. what I'm saying you gotta be prepared for that you know what I mean I didn't jump into the game and just start making money you know what uh -huh. I mean and I'm still not quite making the money that I would like to be making for sure. I feel like we should be getting paid a little bit more especially for what we're doing but hey I'm not complaining either so, right right you know and it and it comes you see yeah. a, you see a you see an open it's it's it, like it's, it's really just hard work and dedication man honestly what you're doing behind closed doors is key like we were just saying, your gratitude and integrity, who you truly are, man, is is the key to For being sure. successful in any sort of business. For you sure. Know, treating people with kindness and respect. And and then taking the opportunities that come your yeah, way. You have and to, taking bro. Them. Yeah, and taking the risk is key, man. Now, you know, before I took this bare knuckle risk, when I tell you nobody wanted me to do it, especially because I wasn't quite winning in my last few amateur fights. Yeah, I may have got robbed. Yeah, this may have happened. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't getting knocked out or nothing, but right. it's a point system, and the point system was not really what I was too fond of and good at, right. especially when you only had fucking six minutes to get it done. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. bro, I can't. You know what I mean? Like, I just had my first amateur fight the other day, man. I so got, you know, bro. I, yeah, like, I, I literally felt like I got robbed. To me, amateur uh, boxing is the fucking hardest, bro. Yeah. Like, that <laughs> shit, well, out of everything that I did, that and then wrestling, you know what yeah. I mean, was absolutely hard, bro, because it's you know they'll rob you just to be give that kid you know more a, you know a little bit that, more exposure right because that, that's what they like you know right. what i mean like god forbid you go fighting the team that's putting on the fucking show in the venue yeah. like you ain't winning bro <laughs> unless you kill that dude you yeah know what i mean and I, I i realized that too man i had him buzz and i'm like oh it's just an exhibition yeah. and Nah. Nope, nope. <laughs> and that is the same thing, bro. I had two standing A counts in my last amateur fight, and they still gave it to the kid. I said, I'm done. I'm done. You'll never see me in the amateur. And I was selling tickets for the venue. Yeah. I'd, have, I'd be on phone with the fucking promoter like, hey, man. You know, I'm going to sell a bunch of tickets. You know, don't hook me up with a, you know, a, a can, but hook me up with a good fight. You know, right. he hooked me up with the best motherfuckers in the area. Every fucking fight I was fighting the absolute best. And yeah. Oh, you got the experience. You could do this. That's what he's saying to me. I'm like, all right, man. Well, that's cool. And it's like, fuck, bro. I'm literally I'm getting, just. I'm getting, I'm getting the, the short end all the time. Right, man. bro. And then finally, you know, I get into bare knuckle. And yeah, there was a couple of matchup that I wasn't fond about right off rip. And I'm like, no, nah, we're not taking that route right now you know mm. what i mean let's try this and then you know you do it and then eventually you just got to fight everybody man i yeah. mean i went from fighting kind of nobody's to everybody's real fucking quick you yeah. know what i mean like i was like shit so you know how did that how do you prepare for that like you prepare for like obviously you want to take the route that works for you and then all of a sudden you're like well there's a lot that goes into a man and that's why i absolutely love fighting because if you don't have your t's crossed and your eyes dotted you will not be successful, or maybe you'll just get a taste of success and it will be ripped right away from you. I mean, you got to mm. have your spirituality, I believe, your mentality, your physical. You know, there's so many things to it that you have to have in line, in order, your diet. You know, one yeah. of the biggest things I did differently this fight than all six fight, I really focused on my gut health. Wow. So I got this thing, it's, it's the master's cleanse, and I'll continue to promote it, and I'll continue to talk about it because it's changing my life for the better, That's and awesome. it's getting my gut under control. I mean, the food that we consume has so many chemicals and bullshit in it yeah. that it's your second brain. So next thing you know, your brain is not operating at a high level. Your body's not operating at a high level. It's very true when they say 
if you want to perform like a like a like a Ferrari, you got to feed yourself like a Ferrari. You For know what sure. I'm saying? You can't feed a Ferrari 87 gas and think that that shit's going to run. I don't care how waxed it is, how pretty it is, how brand new it is, gotta how have it can have not one mile on it. Right. That shit ain't going nowhere. Right. And that was a lot of my problem from a lot of my last fights was my nutrition wasn't on point, bro. Like wow. I wasn't eating bad, but I wasn't eating enough and I wasn't paying attention because in your gut you got yeast mold and other bad shit in there you got parasites from you know the shit we're consuming that that's why it's so important for them to continue to feed us shit so we think like shit we operate like shit Mm. so once i started clearing my gut out i take this thing it's called like i said the master's cleanse it's Cay- it's cayenne pepper, wow. key limes, organic key limes, because all other fruit is pretty much fake. The limes are fake. The lemons are fake. A lot of people don't know this. Wow. You know what I mean? So you get the organic key limes. You can only find them in certain public locations. This is where I've only been able to find them. Right. So I get those. Then you get either MCT or, or very, very pure, fine cooking oil. Uh-huh. Take that with it. And then the last ingredient is salt. And the salt is for the minerals. You know, so I get I order the salt off of... Um, off of this website, it's uh, Modern Roots. Okay. Go to modernroots.com. You can find the pills, the uh, the organic um, cayenne pepper pills, the uh, sea salt, all this stuff. So when you combine this, what happens is your torus field just starts ripping, bro. And then you just you get this energy and this just because that's what it's all about. We're just we're 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 balls of energy in human bodies, mm-hmm. man. And a lot of it is contained, and they contain us by the ingredients that they're putting into this food, the GMO shit. So right. therefore, you can't think at a high level. Right. You can't operate at a high level. So once I started doing this and clearing myself out. Boy, I'm firing on all cylinders <laughs> yeah. now. You know high what I mean? Performance, oh yeah, now That's I'm fire. now I'm a real high performance sports car. You know, That's and fire. it's still hard to get it all down. You know, there's still that more that goes into it with taking the beef liver pills on top of it. So wow. I take those, and that adds the copper that we're deficient in. We're deficient in a lot of these minerals and mm. all of these things, and you don't think about that. So I just do research on research and research, and then you know, luckily when you put your mind in the right places. You don't have to seek it. It will seek you, you right. know, and then all of a sudden you'll just run into it. Like we see we're discussing this and who knows that anybody listening or even maybe yourself, the, the, you know, we're like, damn, I, I wondered, you know, I was wondering about that. Now you just solidified it yeah, for me. Legit. Now, now you know that, OK, that's a very important aspect of it. And I mean, it, it, it helps with anti-aging, mm. you know, your body from, you know, falling apart. You know, you could get a guy who's. 37 years old and he's falling apart you get a guy who's about to be 37 years old like me and i'm i'm ripping around like i'm still yeah, in my yeah, fucking 20s, 20s bro yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying and, still look and, good. And, they, and they and they and they all say that like when i get on other podcasts they're like what like when i fought rick crusoe they're like well i'm gonna give it to ryan because he's younger and hungrier bitch we're the same age <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> what but i'll let about? that shit ride right, you know what i'm saying because right. that's what it is it's an image right people aren't looking at my photo id they're not looking into my wallet like right. you are how you act yeah. you know what i'm saying 1, you you're not your actual age you you're you you are who you know what i'm saying who how you take care of yourself absolutely i know 26 years olds that are fucking living like they're 55 yeah, they 60. look older than the, than right. the rock all like, gray <laughs> hair and you know bad eating habits right. you know they're you know and that's it's the gut health man like i said man it, it's it's pivotal and it's key bro and when I'm you can pay attention that. to those things bro you will you will you will live forever yeah legit because also you know it's funny because we were talking about this but uh the food and drug administration think about that food <laughs> and drug so they what they feed you and then what they give you i mean you. Look, bro i mean you look at the medical sign it's a fucking serpent around the <laughs> damn you know what i mean like come on bro my one of my biggest quotes is you got to pay attention because it's yeah. not free right you know what i'm saying you, For sure. you have to pay attention and those who can pay attention you know stand the chance to not get duped by the damn government or anybody else trying to feed you this shit. I mean, doctors get paid upon pushing vaccines. Yeah. You know, they're pushing poison. And if you can rest your head at night knowing that you're possibly hurting people, yeah. fuck you, bro. Yeah, legit. You know what it's I'm crazy. saying? It's I don't crazy. I don't care how much money you make, bro. Yeah. You can't take that shit with you. And oh, what I God. do believe, you know, this earth realm your energy will go somewhere else. It never dies. You know what I'm saying? So it's up to you to pass these earth realm tests to find out where your soul is going to go. Is it going to get reincarnated and start the process over again? Are you going to elevate to that fifth dimensional of ways of, and it starts here Here. and here. You know what I'm saying? We seek it everywhere, but it's, 
in here. And wow. once you can find out that you can seek it within yourself, you know what I'm saying? And knowledge is power. Unfortunately, there's so much disinformation. And one of my other favorite sayings is after, you know, getting into politics 2020 and all that bullshit rabbit hole, the QAnon and, and all that bullshit, you know, I really realized that the wise man once said nothing because he truly knows nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's and, wrong. and it's cool. We could we could have yeah. these debates for hours about is the earth fucking round or is it flat or <laughs> are they drinking baby blood or is there fucking lizards running the government? Like we could go on for days and days and, right. and we could have real intellectual conversations. But once again, the wise man truly does not know. And he's truly okay with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love the debate. I love the talk. I love the chatter. But what differentiates me from everybody else is the fact that I'm willing to accept that I could be wrong. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people just... If I, I, you know, I've talked to a lot of people about this in the barbershop. You know what I mean? I have a client sit down. We start joining. I'd be like, I don't know, bro. I kind of think the earth may be flat and we live in a dome in a realm. And it'd be like, what? You're fucking stupid, man. You really believe that shit? I'm like, well, I kind of, yes, I kind of do. And yeah, maybe I'm stupid. You know, and the yeah. older, the younger version of me would be like, you're fucking stupid, bro. You don't do any research. You don't do But chill, pump the brakes, because I truly don't know. I'm just going based upon, you know, the signs, the clues, the hints, the things that make sense, bro. Like. Right. And if you think it's the other way, help me help, help me make sense of it. And yeah. if you can and you could show me or prove something or, you know, put me on the, the direction to go research something for myself, I 100% will because that's just how I am. I'm open-minded to any and every situation. But one thing that I learned is that authenticity and love are the number one frequencies and they can't be penetrated or broke. So that's why a lot of the – even though we're, we're fighting, yes – but at the end of the day, I still got a lot, a ton of love and respect for not only my opponent, but anybody who steps in there. And generally, I don't speak bad. And even with Blias, I'm not. I wouldn't speak bad about him. He's, right. you know, on the same mission as me. He's a soldier just like me. You know. But what's gonna differentiate us is whose frequency is higher. Who's, sure. you know, because there's no such thing as luck. You right. know, I don't believe in luck. Yeah. It, it's it's perseverance and you know what you've put into it and you know, is what you're going to get back. And when we both seem to we've put our all into it, and now we're going to see who's going to reap the, the, the ultimate reward. And I, I fucking can't wait, man. <laughs> Honestly, I can't wait. September. I can't wait to stare down his face and just look through his soul and be like, I hope you're ready. Yeah. Because I'm fucking ready. <laughs> what day is it? September 13th. September 13th. It will be a movie. Man, what, one question I have, uh, you, you talked about it early, and... The barbershop, barbershop chatter. You own a barbershop. Yep. How did you get involved in that? <sighs> One day, my dad came home. I was about 18 years old, and he was like, he's like, hey, you know, you, you really need to start figuring out what you're going to do with yourself. I'm like, yeah, I have no idea, man. Of course, I wanted to be with this big boxer and this, but those dreams are very, you know, a lot yeah. of that is who you know and how long, you know, a lot of those cats have been into it since they were this big. You right. know what I'm saying? So. Right. Uh, yeah, I got into it at 16, but unfortunately, I bounced around too much. I was karate, kung fu, MMA, boxing, back to kickboxing, back to, you know what I mean? Right. So, like, never really stuck one thing out. And, uh, you know, my dad brought it up to me, and he was like, hey, man, you know, you should uh, you should look into this 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 barber school. And I'm like, I'm not gay. I'm not going to cut. I'm not going to cut hair. You know, I had this little ego and ego driven and then i was like well all right i'll look into it and then because like up north i wasn't really used to that like we go to these barbershops and they're like fucking hangouts bro yeah. it's cool as shit yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. like plus where we were therapy for the next guy comes in and vents to us and we help <laughs> yeah. him out and yeah, you know what i mean they, the they love us yeah, yeah you, you know so the therapist for us. so you know i i got into the school and i couldn't cut hair with the shit bro and i wow. almost i didn't even take it serious i i almost like and then finally like last like couple months that I was in there, I started to do good edges and do kind of good haircuts. And it took all it took was one person to be like, "Hey, that looks good." I was like, "Yeah, you think so?" I'm like, "Well, maybe I can do this." Wow. And then I kind of pump faked it until I made it, bro. And then I got into the barber shop. He's like, "Can you cut?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I could cut real good." And I was okay, but then I got I was, you know, lucky enough to sit next to a guy from uh, I think he was from New York. Um, and he was outstanding at cutting hair, so I learned a lot of shit from him. So I picked up a lot of, you know, tactics and ways to do things and the swagger. And, you know, it's an art form. And I was already a martial artist, so 
I, I, it got easy for me. And then, you know, we, we worked with this one guy and he was kind of a douchebag and, you know, really <laughs> wanted to be a dictator about how we did things and what the way we spoke and all that shit. And that was cool and all up until like, you know, he just got to the point where he couldn't control every aspect of what we did and ended up firing us. And it kind of opened the door for me and my boy who got fired at that time to be like, there was a fully furnished salon not even three miles down the road wow. that he was like, bro, we should just take that over. And I'm like, I, I don't know, bro. He always said that this it's hard and this and that. And then we did it and hit the ground running. Now he was the owner. He ended up getting addicted to opiates and then losing the shop. And then it was either I take it over or I let somebody else take it over and be under them. I was like, I can't be under nobody no more. So I took it over and it's been a fucking nightmare for, you know, eight years. You know what I mean? It really has, bro. It hasn't been nothing like, oh, I'm a business owner. I'm making all this money con here. I'd really right. like to step in and step out because, right. you know, then I'm in charge of who I'm hiring and who's in there. And, you know, a, a right. lot of barbers were degenerates, man. We come from the damn streets. So you're getting yeah. a lot of hood shit. You're getting a lot of, you know, different, you know, drug addicts, this and that. So you got to kind of groom people and try to show them the way. And it, it's tough, man. Yeah, Entrepreneurship it's, is tough. It, it's tough, man. It's a lot of work that goes into it, man. But it also gives me the freedom to not be locked into a nine to five and to not be out here in the fucking streets, pounding concrete and sweating like, you know, like guys like Travis, Travis Thompson, you know, working outside in the sun and, and cutting grass all fucking day, man. I commend yeah. those guys to yeah. be able to do that and then try to f squeeze in training. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Gotta be dedicated, man. At least with me, if I got something lined up, I can really devote a lot of my time and my energy into my training. And that's what I do. And, and a lot of the guys like would always question and ask, bro, you, you're never in the shop like you need to be or like you should be i said bro i got a plan don't you fucking worry about me and a lot of people may have thought i was being lazy or just you know was hanging out at the house playing video games nah bro if i ain't in the damn barber shop i'm in the gym Fire. or you know v vice versa or I'm, I'm i'm making money some other way that's more than making money into the damn barber shop at that moment but i mean everything that i'm doing is is you know there's a purpose behind it for the most part. You know That's what awesome, I mean? Man. Once That's in a awesome. while, we can fuck off, but you know, <laughs> for try the not to. I'm not trying yeah. to for, for too much. Well, bro, when we come back on the last segment, man, I'm going to ask you some advice for people when you're in, in the industry, um, whatever industry. A couple of, of uh, you know, maybe uh, questions for you to look back on on Younger Reaver. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll go from there, man. All right, let's do it. Yo, we're back on Youngest in the Yacht Club. Man, Royal Reaver, man. You've got... So many stories. I love the energy that you bring. You know what I'm saying? You bring uh, that authentic energy. You talked about it. You're you're an entrepreneur. You're a fighter. What what else do you do? I know you say you're in the gym. Like, how's family life, man? Uh, you know, it's good when my kids aren't driving me through the damn dirt. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I got an older daughter, man. She's... She's doing good, man. But, you know, the boys and the bullshit and, you know... How's it being a girl dad, bro? <sighs> it's rough, bro. I got boys, so it's I... rough. Yeah, you. you <laughs> I wouldn't know dodged, that life. You dodged a huge bullet, <laughs> and you're a fighter too. So it's gotta be. And, like... it, and it's still these kids don't give a fuck what you do for a living, and Ooh. I make sure they're known right off rip. You know what I do for a living, right, man? Don't fuck up. Don't <laughs> fuck up. You know what I mean? <laughs> they still, yeah, they still, you yeah. know. And I just gotta tell my daughter, like, they see this. This is the company you choose to surround yourself with. This is why I told you don't do that. You right. know what I mean? So right. hopefully she learned a little lesson, and I think she has. But you that's know. awesome. How many kids do you have? I got five. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So you have a big family. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Being a dad and then like, it, so I got to ask this question because I, I just had my first MMA match and I told my lady, do not bring the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I know, bro. I, my kids haven't came to any of my fights either. Right? But you know what, man? It's it's televised on TV, so they're going to watch it regardless. Okay. So I'm bringing my son to this one, the championship. Awesome. Yeah. You know, he's 13, man. He's ready. You know, Yeah, so. yeah. I, I just, especially my first one, I wanted to make sure that I could get through it. You're right, bro. Yeah, it's, yeah, trust me, I was the same way, man. Right. My kid's like, oh, I want to. But the biggest thing is, is like for what I do in the venues and stuff, like I'm so locked in, like I can't, I don't want to be responsible for, you know, the chasing stress. my kids, you know, the distractions, right. chasing my kids down or making sure they're good or, you know, at least with this one, I got a lot of family coming right. and, you know, he could kind of stay tucked off. I got a, I got a younger brother who's. My brother's 18, you know what I mean? Right. So he'll be with him. And, yeah. you know, being 13 years old now, he's a little bit older. So I got, I can worry less, you right. know what I mean? for sure. So that's good. That's good, man. And 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 they're cool with you fighting? Yeah, I mean, like I said, at first, nobody wanted me to do it. He, he's like, Dad, you, you didn't even win your last couple of amateur fights. Why are you doing this? I said, son, you'll see why. <laughs> I need you, you know to. I mean? 
<laughs> yeah. I, and, it, and it was. It was something I knew that I it just it was like, I have to do this. Yeah. I have to. That's awesome. I have to, man. And I did it, man, and hit the ground running. And the next stop is legendary, bro. That's fine. You know what I mean? Yeah, title and, shot, man. You know, this is everything I worked for, bro. This, Congrats. You know, so. If you could go back in time to a certain point in your life, it could be any time. What would you, what piece of advice would you give your younger self? Choose your surroundings better. Mm. You know, choose the people you associate with, you know, because you do become who you associate with. You know what I mean? So the little hood rats that I was hanging out with, yeah. you know, only attracts hood rat girls, which attracts more hood rat shit. Right. And, you know, that's probably the biggest. Choose your surroundings. You know, remember you are who you hang out with. So if you hang around with five drug dealers, you're probably going to be the sixth one. Yep. You hang around with five millionaires, you're going to become the sixth one. Yeah. You come, you hang around with fucking six fighters, you'll become the seventh one. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. very true, man. It's very, very true. And, you know, like I said, I've always had pretty, pretty humble... Um, Good gratitude and integrity, uh, good energy. But yeah. that was probably basically it, just choosing the people that I surrounded myself with. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, that's and, and it's that's that's a big part of it, man. Choose your choose your crowd wisely. That's awesome that you said that because you you said that at the beginning, and now the advice is to, to to everybody else, even to your younger self, is like, hey, this. So it's consistent, man. It's that. Oh, absolutely, and yeah. that's what it is. And and consistency is key to yeah. anything that you do. Yeah. You have to be consistent. You got to show up on the days you don't want to show up. You know, rest is very important, yes, but being lazy is not, you know right, what I mean? And if you sure. can drive yourself to do it and your body, even if your body is not always feeling up to it, do it, man. I'm telling you guys, like, my consistency has opened doors for me that, you know, others, you know, they wouldn't, you yeah, know what I mean? So For sure. Let, in Youngest in the Yacht Club, because, I mean, bro, they see you on the BKFC. They see you. Now they're going to see you September 13th in the title shot for the belt, for the strap. You know, they see, they're going to see that. You win, they're going to see you holding up that strap. They're going to see it being wrapped around you. But they don't really see the waters that you had to do to get there. Any advice to, young, you know, people of the youngest in the Yacht Club on how to get where you're going or how to get further? Like, what advice to people in your industry or even entrepreneurship or anything? What would you give them? Once again, your gratitude and integrity, what you're doing behind closed doors is who you truly are. Yeah. And consistency. You know, stay consistent. If you if you plan on doing something, don't let distractions get in the way. Don't take time off. And if you do, don't take too much time off. You know, right. that hurt me a lot. You know, taking time off, take, being like unsure about what I want to do. You know, so if you have a plan, stick with it and, you know... Choose your surroundings good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Choose the people that, you know, if they're not for you or they're not helping you elevate, just get rid of those people, man, because those aren't your people. Good. No and matter that, how long you've known them for. Yeah. You know, that, I've known people years and years and years and had to decide to cut them off, man, because it's just poor ass energy. Yeah. You know, or they're argumentative. And it's like, you should never be in a, in a room like my true homies, Dave, Julian, a lot of those guys, like, I never really, we never really, we may have had disagreements. Even me and Dave haven't, but me and Julian may have had a couple of disagreements, but we never had no, like, blowout arguments or, like, right. you know what I mean? You shouldn't have to argue with your homie. Right. And you should always be, be there willing to, to, to bring them up, you know what I'm saying, to help out. You know, there should be no, you know, put the ego shit to the side. Egotistical people are just, you know, yeah. those aren't, that's not what no you want. No place wanna, for it, right? Nah, bro, there's yeah. no place for that shit, bro. And you keep those people together and then you you know you you put you surround yourself with strong-minded open-minded kind-hearted individuals because like i said the truest forms of energy in my opinion are love and authenticity it's awesome you man. know what that's i mean awesome. and, and those things can't be they, they can't be fucked with man that's dope you know i can always move with good intentions and love and still be a fucking crazy ass fighter <laughs> you know what i mean and that's Legit. that's who that's that's what i am that's awesome man well bro man shout out where can the people find you man uh, you could come check me out at Royal Reber. Um, I think uh, Facebook is Royal William Reber, R-E-B-E-R. -E -E okay. Um, yeah, man. And I'm on Instagram, Facebook, a little bit of TikTok. I usually, I usually get TikTok for any information that I want because you could get so much information on a little two, three minute video. That's how I learned about the gut cleanse. You I know feel I mean? like, yo, not to go off on a tangent, but I feel like that's why they want to shut it down. Because I, there's so I much say the energy, same thing, right? bro. Like, <laughs> and you know, you got to be very cautious about what it is you, what kind of rabbit hole you, you go down. And, mm -hmm. and mostly that is like conspiratorial shit, right. you know, shit like that. You got to be careful with, but like, as far as like, you know, health and, 
you know, wh- whatever it is. It's, you know, it's, my girl found a, she, she found a, not to cut you off, but she found a way to like, to get a cold, right? Like little pepper and honey. And well, stuff. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's this, this master's cleanse, bro. I haven't even had a nose run. Because all this is starts in your gut, like 90 something percent. So when you're sick, it's gut health. Wow. When you have to check that and when you don't. And like I said, the remedy is, uh, I, what's his, I forget the man's Instagram that I follow. It's Jacob something, but, um, man, once I cleansed that, that gut out and like really did it, I mean, you're going to be shitting for a couple of days, some craziness, <laughs> but you're, you're really get, getting rid of all that Toxins. yeast mold parasites all this shit that you don't even really even like a little skinny bastard like me you yeah. you still can can there's still shit sitting in your in your gut that you know is fucking with your mental and you're like you wake up and you're like why do i feel lethargic why do I? and then motherfuckers think that they may need drugs right or they may need uh you know steroids or they may need extra testosterone like no this shit changed my life bro wow. like it, it it like i said anti-aging um just your mental clarity, your mental mind state, my energy in the gym. Like, I'm able to go way longer than I was able to go. I mean, wow. there's times where I'm going fucking, I'm doing 15 rounds, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? Not, And that's after I already hit a personal training session with my man Nick over at, you know, Palm Harbor 360, which is Dave's personal trainer. Because, wow. you know, when you see people like that, when I seen Dave, and he's honestly one of my pound for pound favorites bro yeah. he's very very fucking good and in tune so i'm like okay where does he train it because i know he was local you know what right. i'm saying right next to me so i'm like where does he train at what does he do right. where does he go so then you know i follow right around there i'm like okay so now i met his personal trainer now now that's my personal trainer yeah. you know what i mean yeah and even when i brought hd and hd came up with all in to uh, come do a little workout with me, and he wasn't is he's t- almost twenty pounds bigger than me, and still wasn't accustomed to doing the shit that I was doing. Wow. He was like, "Damn, bro, yeah, you, you really, really working here?" Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's awesome. And and that's awesome to me, bro, because I know that man. So he's a fucking yeah, beast, he's bro. A monster, he's dude. one of my favorite BKFC fighters as well, man. Yeah. And you know he's yeah, you know to go in there and and be you know 15, 20 pounds lighter than him, and and to you know. Really get through workout, and he's 29, 28. You yeah, know what I'm saying? He's yeah. almost 10 years younger than yeah, me, bro. Yeah, you know what crazy. I'm saying? And I'm going yeah. in there and I'm just fucking. So that just goes to show me that I'd say 90% of the roster I could outwork. Yeah, you know what I mean? Awesome. And that's what it's truly about is your hard work, your dedication, your sacrifice, what you're willing to put into this. Wow. You know what I mean? And it could be anything. I don't care what you want to be. Yeah. And don't ever, ever, ever let somebody tell you you cannot. They've you know what I'm saying? That. If it's. If you can see it, you can achieve it. You know what I'm saying? A hundred percent. If anybody, you know, and there's exceptions to certain things. I mean, we know that. I mean, yeah, you're you're not going to be six, seven. You can't grow. Right. 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 You can't grow. You know what I'm saying? You you may not be able to ever learn how to dunk when you're five, (laughs) nine like me. You know what I mean? There's exceptions. Right. Yeah. But be real with yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, That's part of it. The authenticity is being, you know, don't be two different people. You know what I'm saying? Don't be this one guy in front of the camera. You know, like Shady Grady, for example. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, you are so full of shit, bro. <laughs> and I know too much information about you. So you out here grinding and screaming and talking about you going to cut me. That shit is fake, bro. That's We're crazy. fighting with no gloves on in two fucking days. Why are you acting like this? Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I see right through your whole fucking facade. Like, wow. stop, bro. Yeah. Be authentic. It scares me more when somebody's genuine and, like, shakes your hand and looks in your eyes like, bro, I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? You're like, yeah. fuck, dude, that dude's fucking, <laughs> that's that real calculated craziness. Yeah. Like, if you can fucking smile in, 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 in the face of danger, bro, yeah. like, you were fucking crazy, bro, yeah, for real. It's, it's and that's nuts. me, bro. Like, I've done a lot of crazy-ass shit, man. <laughs> Well, bro, let the plug plug the fight. Plug where you gonna be at, man. And, and it's been a, it's been an amazing show, man. When are you fighting again? September thirteenth, main event, Hard Rock Hollywood. Tune in, baby. It will be a movie. BKFC. Where can they find it? Is it a P- BKFC? You can go through the Play Store. Get a get the app on the Play Store. That's the best spot to do it. Awesome. Um, uh, Roku TV. I think uh, Fubo is it. Fubo yep. Sports. Yep. Has it. Um. Yeah, and that's that's where you could check it out, man. So September thirteenth, man, go check out Royal Reber and his title shot main event September thirteenth. We made it, kids. We made it, baby. All the hard work paid off. Let's you know what I'm go. saying? I came from absolutely nothing to be in this situation, and that's why I'm telling you guys, 
you can make anything out of out of nothing. You know what I'm it's saying? Amazing, if you put bro. your mind to it, man. So, you know, that's that's the most important message. Well, bro, thanks for being on the show, man. Appreciate hey, man, thank you, man. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, man. You a vibe, bro. And this show was great, bro. Awesome. For sure. Awesome, bro. Thanks, man. I appreciate you, brother. <laughs>